I never even considered the book could be published in the first place, and I never really thought about it in terms of publication. So, you know, getting it published was a big enough surprise. Um, the book being successful is a surprise, it being made into a play is a surprise, and then it being made into a film is a surprise as well. So it's just been a kind of series of sort of um, different surprises that have become quite inured to. I think the first thing that you have to do, I mean, certainly uh, you have to say that uh, you've written a book and that um, somebody's making a book of the film or a, a film of the book or a play of the book or whatever. And the whole point of it, uh, the exciting part of it, is that it's going to be transformed in some way. And uh, the more, uh, from my own point of view, the more kind of transformation, the better. I don't want it to sort of, you kind of have a kind of like, People have gone about a faithful interpretation of it, but you can't have a faithful interpretation of something. You can maybe have it in spirit, but uh, it's, it's going to change as it moves into a different medium. And I think with film, you kind of, or even you know, any any other sort of different kind of medium, you don't have the same degree of freedom as you maybe do with the blank page, in which you can everything can go on to that blank page, and you can have a, you can build up a lot of. Um, psychological depth to the characters whereas in film you've really got to say maybe take a line on it and say is this a black comedy or is this social realism or whatever and uh, maybe stick to that kind of line. The thing that appealed to me about Shallow Grave was the constant action and movement and I think that sits really well with uh, the bias towards action that Mon writing has that constant sort of motion and movement and keeping things moving and keeping things happening. The other thing I really liked about it was just the, the sheer the sheer beauty of the, the camera work, the camera angles and the colours, the use of primary colours as well. I mean, that kind of, that detail in filmmaking, I think, and that kind of sort of craft has just uh, really been absent, that kind of stylization has been absent in British films. It was set in Edinburgh between 1982 and 1987 or something like that, but, uh, 88 perhaps, but um, the the kind of the issues of um, drug addiction, uh, drug abuse uh, and the ongoing HIV issues uh, are as pertinent as ever, probably more so now. Probably up until about a couple of years ago, train spotting was probably more applicable to Glasgow now than it was to Edinburgh because Edinburgh had kind of the thing had moved uh, but I mean it's like the drug that people choose isn't really the issue I mean the fact is that there's just so much just so, there's so little opportunities for people it's not surprising that people are going to try and get out of it or try and obliviate uh, as much of the pain in the world as possible You admire the, the discipline that uh, actors have. I mean, it's like yeah, I, I kind of, I've now sort of worked a fair bit with actors over the year and I mean, I used to think it very much was like kind of just uh, a bunch of people poncing around on stage kind of sort of thing, but uh, the concentration, the effort, the work uh, that, that goes into it to, um, from the actors and the whole crew, it just, you know, you, you, you see kind of what a really sweaty craft Crafting kind of sort of um, kind of work intensive industry actually is. I'm playing this uh, drugs dealer who's um, probably the, one of the most unsympathetic characters in the book. Uh, who's um, pretty kind of manipulative and nasty and sort of horrible guy. So you know, a lot of people will be saying sort of typecasting again, like, you know.